All right, guys, I try not to say this too much, but I gotta be honest with you and upfront. This week is just going to be completely ridiculous and bonkers. We have the CPI release, followed right up by the Fed meeting that's absolutely gonna determine the course of the market basically for the rest of the summer on. Oh yeah, and the markets are at a critical resistance level and apparently the bear market is over now too. So let's get into all that, discuss what's true, what's not, and everything else right after you gently tap that like button and consider subscribing to It's Super Easy To Do if you like the truth without the hype. All right, so let's start right there with the end of the bear market and kind of dig through what's true, what's not, and everything else. And I'm just gonna be upfront right here with you guys. I honestly don't care about the end of a bear market, the beginning of a bull market, whatever the case is. I've been saying it for since we started, bear market started. Nobody's gonna know until we're out of the bear market till six or eight months till after we're out of the bear market. Sometimes it takes even longer than that to confirm it. And then you still have some folks who are still think that we're still in the bear market from 2009, that that thing never ended in the first place, despite the greatest bull run happening in between. So the opinions, the, the numbers, the data, everything else, everybody can kind of point to something that kind of creates the narrative that they want. But for me, as an individual stock picker and a long-term buy and hold investor, none of that matters to me in the end. Now, is it really over or not? I, honestly, just to give you guys an opinion, I don't know. I can, I can say that it is passing a lot of indicators and a lot of different technical numbers that basically point towards us coming out of that bear market and starting up the next bull run. Now, don't think like 2020, 2021 bull run, but you know, kind of coming out of the market and starting to recover and get on that next bull run that you know hopefully will last for years moving forward. Are we there yet? I don't know, but I can absolutely say that some of the technical indicators that are out there that people are pointing to are absolutely showing that that could be a possibility there. Now, you guys know me, I just buy stocks when they're undervalued, period. Bull market, bear market, it doesn't freaking matter. That's what I'm looking at. That's absolutely when I look to execute is when a stock is undervalued, regardless of what the market's doing, because let's be honest, some stocks are, you know, they bottomed six months, eight months. Oh gosh, we are in June. So <laughs> 12 months ago, they bottomed you know, and, and we were still in the very depths of the bear market back then. Some stocks aren't going to bottom for another six months, maybe even a year, maybe even two years from now. So it's kind of all over the map there. So all the folks that were kind of, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to wait until we got confirmation this bear market's over with before I put my money in. Well, those folks sitting in all cash, they missed out on stocks like, you know, Meta in the 80s, Google in the 80s, Amazon in the 80s, NVIDIA in the 120s, Palantir in the sixes. You had SoFi in the fours. You had Tesla at $100 per share. I mean, those were all steel deal, once of a lifetime type pricing on those type stocks. And those people sitting on cash waiting for confirmation of this or confirmation of that or whatever all the other things and all the other noise that was out there, they're still waiting and they missed out on those deals. Can those stocks go back down to those levers? Well, yeah, I mean, anything's possible, guys. It is the stock market, but is that likely? I'm not thinking so, especially if some of the technicals are starting to line up for us being out of the bear market. I don't see all of a sudden Meta becoming a bad company and going all the way back down to 80 again, or same with Google, Tesla, and, you know, take your pick. I just don't see things lining up that way. Now you didn't miss any of that if you followed this channel. You guys know I put in more money in the market in 2022 than I ever have ever in the stock market because the deals were just that juicy. They were just that great. And yeah, you're right guys. My group didn't miss a single buy alert either. And they were right there buying along with me. Matter of fact, they were buying a lot of different stocks that I wasn't even buying. I wasn't all over the Nvidia, uh, the AMDs, a lot of other stocks like that that have had huge runs that they were all over and posting their buy alerts and their theses and the whole nine all throughout the group. So there is, and you guys out there too, I can guarantee you there's all kinds of stocks you guys are up on. You know, you're up at a 2X, a 3X on some great stocks, not speculative penny trash, not all the other garbage plays that were out there, or all the, you know, meme stocks or whatever the case was. These are great long-term businesses, long-term buy and hold investors with love that you guys were picking up for essentially pennies on the dollar during the past year or so. So end of the bear market, beginning of the bull market, whatever the case is, it doesn't matter to me unless you're buying index funds or something like that. The point is it's completely irrelevant to what I'm doing because finding those deals, finding the best stocks at the lowest prices has absolutely zero to do with where the market is and where it is in the cycle in regards to that. But it has everything to do with valuation. During this past bear market, now mind you, this is during this past bear market right here, definitely a bear market, the whole market's down, everything else. You had Meta at its cheapest valuation ever. You had Google at its cheapest valuation ever. And a bunch of other great stocks like that at their cheapest valuations ever. And then on the flip side, during a bear market, you know, you had stocks like McDonald's trading at one of its highest valuations ever. 
You know, Coca-Cola trading at one of its highest valuations ever and a bunch of other stocks like that, extremely overvalued. They were not screaming deals lowest valuation ever. They were the exact opposite during a bear market. And guys, this happens in every single bear market. It's not this one constant thing down where everybody goes down and then everybody goes up and everything else in between. That's why valuation is so important because maybe you just liked McDonald's better than you did, you know, uh, Tesla, for example. Man, you would have been buying it way high. My guess is your return over the next couple of years is not going to be near what the return is on Tesla. I mean, Tesla's already up over 100% right now just this year. I hadn't looked at McDonald's. I guess I should have before I made the video, but, you know, well, here, let me look. By comparison, McDonald's is only up 8% this year. So you kind of see the wide divergence there in regards to what all is happening, where your money's going, what's going out of steam, and you kind of see it doesn't matter. The point is that tells me that some investors last year experienced basically a bull market while other investors experienced an extreme bear market, depending upon what stocks you owned in the first place. That's where evaluation kind of separates those that follow the crowd or follow the news narrative or follow YouTubers or whatever the case is. And those that actually buy stocks on a discount based upon that valuation and build real wealth. I mean, you just, it's a skill you have to learn, guys. Yeah, you can join my group. You're right. You can see those buys. And we got a whole course dedicated to how do you basically, you know, build up your stock portfolio. Actually, we have all, you know, five pack of courses there that you kind of take to kind of start your whole wealth building journey, kind of beginning to end, basically starting with the plan all the way to the end, all the way down to the real estate and where you live. All those sort of things are there, but you can learn it from Google. I mean, just, or I guess you probably chat GPT too, but I mean, who knows what accuracy that is. But the point is there's tons of great YouTube videos out there. There's other courses that you can take. There's all sorts of ways you can educate yourself on actually being able to do evaluation, actually being able to evaluate what's going on in the market, learn that, get better, increase those skills. So that way you're able to identify those opportunities whenever they come and the fear narrative doesn't scare you. I wasn't scared at all to buy Meta in the eighties. Just wasn't. I wasn't scared to buy Tesla at 100. I just wasn't. I didn't care that some folks showed the charts that it was going down to 60 or 40. And I didn't care that Meta was just a done business and nobody's ever going to use it again. And that, you know, the facts showed me something very, very different because I knew how to do evaluation. I knew how to evaluate those companies. I knew how to look into that. But in regards to a bear market, bull market, whatever the case is, I, I don't I don't freaking care. I could care less about all that. But what I do care about is what's going to actually move the market in the short term here. And you guys know that's the CPI. And then the very next day we got the Fed meeting there. So let's talk about those next. Now, just kind of given the timing of everything and kind of, uh, you know, as inflation's kind of abated and some other things like that, I don't think we're going to have a lot of movement on the CPI number. Now that's unless, unless, you know, the number is low. I mean, like really low, like down in the threes. I mean, can you imagine if we got like a 3.5, 3.6 or something like that? I think you could see the market rally very, very good there. Or, you know, something the opposite, basically it coming in a little bit hot, maybe even back up into the fives again. I mean, can you imagine the sell, sell off that would kind of happen if we had that sort of uh, event that happened there with the CPI data? So outside of that, you know, anything kind of in between there, you know, lower than what it was before, but, you know, maybe not extremely low down in those mid threes or so. I think the market's going to, you know, you're going to get a tepid reaction to it. That doesn't mean it won't rally, probably rally a little bit. I mean, who freaking knows? Maybe they'll run it up before the announcement. So that way it goes down. It's just traders playing trading games. I don't play any of those sort of games. But there's a lot of anticipation on what the Fed's actually going to do with that data and all the rest of the data that they've been looking at. So that, to me, is going to be the actual market mover. Now, personally, I think they're probably going to pause. That, to me, is what I'm kind of giving the uh, highest uh, you know, ratio to. The most likely scenario is they're going to pause. And then the second most likely, and I know folks don't want to hear it, is we get that last quarter point raise. I don't think they're going to do it and, you know, unless there's something in the data that's ugly there. I don't see a reason for them to do it. But, uh, you know, it's an outside chance still, and it's definitely, uh, you know, not completely off the table per se. And that's, that's using Jerome's words. Those aren't my words. It's his words. It could still be on the table. So that is an outside possibility there. But most likely we get a pause. Now, if that happens and they pause and we have a pretty good CPI number, I think the market continues to move up. Now, not crazy up, not, you know, uh, you know, 200 percent returns in the first six months of the year like we're seeing right now. Not anything like that. But I do think it gives the market more strength and more money is going to come off the sidelines. You know, this huge, massive trillions of dollars worth of cash sitting on the sidelines starts to come in and maybe starts to take on a little bit more risk and kind of seeing some things kind of clear up. Now, if there's a really low number and the Fed actually discusses cuts of some sort in a positive light, you know, basically some more dovish commentary about that, then that's where we could see a rocket ship and some more, you know, risk on plays really, really moving. Now, I don't think that's likely. I'm going to discuss that in a different video because it's just too much. That's like a whole different discussion there in regards to rate cuts. Um, I think everybody's got it wrong. 
So we're going to discuss that in depth specifically here in the, the next video that comes out after this one. It's just, there's too much to get into as I started kind of looking at this one to do it in this video. So don't want to drag this one out too long. So that's kind of my predictions for this week, all the chaos and everything else that I think we're going to see. And remember, if you want to take those five courses for free, see all my buy and sell alerts, learn how to do that valuation that we're discussing here, have the best group of six and seven figure investors in my discord helping you out. Tons of exclusive videos. I mean, literally guys, we got a stock analyzer tool. It's coming. It's going to be free for members. There's just more in there. Check out the pen comment down there and see everything that's involved. See if it's right for you and click this video here to see the stocks I'm buying now and click this video here to see my exact plan during this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.